Recently, I put out a couple videos documenting the dangers of Hollywood and spiritualism. One on Jim Carrey and another on Oprah Winfrey, which are both available on my YouTube channel. The purpose of these videos has been to show clearly and without doubt that many actors and actresses in Hollywood are admittedly opening their minds up and allowing spirits to enter into them. Many believe that they are allowing dead people to come into them so that they can do these amazing performances. But the Bible has clearly told us that the dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5. And so as has been previously documented, even out of their own mouths, they have been telling us that a spirit is guiding and inhabiting their bodies when they are doing these performances. The Bible says that Babylon is a habitation of devils and these spirits of devils are seeking to inhabit many in the movie industry. But some have believed them to be just dead people. Did you channel any of his characters? Uh, as you played Oscar Grant? Uh, nah, um, um, Oscar's his own thing. You know, I prayed a lot to Oscar during this. I prayed a lot to Oscar during this. You know, I asked for his guidance to be around me, like shooting this film. So I mean, I, I can't, I can't give any, give any credit to anybody but Oscar. And, um, and you know, I would, I would pray to him. You know, I would, I would channel his energy. I would just ask to be around. That there was a, a particularly profound moment where I went to. Um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is where Desmond eventually retired and passed away. And I went onto his old property um, and went into his, his old wood, wood, woodshed and handled his tools and walked around the lake that he would walk around. And it was, <laughs> I spent a day there just kind of praying <laughs> and, and, and asking, like, just guide me through this. If you can hear me tell, like, tell me, tell me what to do. Tell me how to move. Tell me how to speak. Tell me how to behave, and I'll do whatever you say. So that, that there was some, there, there was a, a, a strange, mysterious spirituality going on around the the making of this film. Desmond Doss, a Seventh Day Adventist, served as a combat medic with an infantry company in World War II, but further distinguished himself in the Battle of Okinawa by saving 75 men and becoming the only conscientious objector to receive the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Second World War. His life has been the subject of books and also a documentary called The Conscientious Objector and recently the subject of the critically acclaimed movie about his heroics called Hacksaw Ridge. Desmond Doss has been dead since 2005 and knows not anything, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5 of the Bible, so it is not possible for Desmond to inhabit anyone. Hacksaw Ridge was directed by Mel Gibson, a professed Catholic who needs our prayers. He is also the director of the highly acclaimed film Passion of the Christ, probably the most publicized movie of Christ of all time. The actor who portrayed Desmond Doss in the movie Hacksaw Ridge was Andrew Garfield who also starred in the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Another recent movie that Andrew Garfield starred in is a movie called Silence, which is a movie where Andrew portrayed a Jesuit priest. These two Jesuits, the, the you and Adam Driver, play these two Jesuits who are deeply tested. Mm. Uh, their faith is deeply tested because they're captured by the Japanese who are trying to rid uh, Japan of, of Christians at the time. So, did you have to study? Like, did you study to be a Jesuit? I studied with a, a mutual friend of ours. I studied with a, a mutual friend of ours, Father James Martin, who sure. used to. Yeah, he was the chaplain of the Colbert Nation. For yeah, years. Uh, yeah, and someone that I love as dearly as you seem to. And he, um, I studied with him for a year, and I went through the um, Ignatian spiritual exercises. Why did Andrew Garfield study with Father Martin for a year? It is what is called method acting. An actor, and actually I found out that Stanislavski, who invented modern acting, the method of modern acting that resulted in the American method and everything after that, was deeply inspired by St. Ignatius's spiritual exercises, so I felt kind of right at home. Many actors have went through these types of processes, and we will examine it as we continue. But it all comes from Jesuit theater, and as Aleister Crowley said, acting is the fastest way to become inhabited by a demon. The Order of the Jesuits was created at the time when the Protestant Reformation was shaping out. While Martin Luther was protesting evils of Catholicism, there was another man named Ignatius Loyola who established the Jesuit Order, also known as the Society of Jesus. Both of them were monks, the difference being that Loyola, instead of confessing his sins and forsaking them, suppressed them to the point where the voice of conscience and the voice of God was no longer heard in the soul. Jesuit common practice is to close the mind to the voice of conscience. Samuel Morse, who invented the telegraph and Morse code, and was also a close friend of Abraham Lincoln, said, And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? If any are ignorant, let them inform themselves of their history without delay. No time is to be lost. A sort of Masonic order 
With super added features of revolting odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous, they are about in all your society. They can assume any character that of angels of light or ministers of darkness to accomplish their one great end, the service upon which they are sent. Whatever that service may be, bound to no family, community or country by the ordinary ties which bind men and sold for life to the cause of the Roman Pontiff. Abraham Lincoln, regarding the American Civil War of 1861-65 said, the war would never have been possible without the sinister influence of the Jesuits. We learn from J.E. Shepard, a Canadian historian. Between 1555 and 1931, the Society of Jesus was expelled from at least 83 countries, city-states and cities for engaging in political intrigue and subversion plots against the welfare of the state, according to the records of a Jesuit priest of repute, Thomas J. Campbell. Practically every instance of expulsion was for political intrigue, political infiltration, political subversion, and inciting to political insurrection. John Adams, the second president of the United States, said it this way, My history of the Jesuits is not eloquently written, but it is supported by unquestionable authorities and is very particular and very horrible. Their restoration in 1814 by Pope Pius VII is indeed a step toward darkness, cruelty, despotism, and death. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the Society of Ignatius de Loyola. So, did you have to study, like, did you study to be a Jesuit? He, um, I studied with him for a year, and I went through the um, Ignatian spiritual exercises. The Jesuits have been known as the most cruel and powerful of all backers of popery, cut off from earthly ties and human interests, their reason and conscience wholly silenced. What is their inspiration? Satan and the practice of emptying oneself and allowing a spirit to inhabit and use them is the origin of method acting. What today is known as contemplative prayer and spiritual formation or spiritual exercises, emptying oneself, some might call it, is all done in an effort to receive spiritual power from on high. Has anyone fasted? Has anyone gone through like a fast or, yeah. And it's a beautiful spiritual process because the idea is you empty out in order for spirit to enter. Mm -hmm. As I discussed in previous videos concerning Jim Carrey and Oprah Winfrey, the spiritual exercises being practiced involve emptying oneself. This is what is done in order for a demon to inhabit someone. However, when one shuts their mind to the Word of God, it is not the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of the devil that comes into them. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 8, and when they shall say to you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. It is not the Spirit of God. In fact, the testimony of Andrew Garfield is that it is the Spirit of the devil himself. You did, you did a week of... of, of uh, uh silence right silent retreat yeah my, myself and Adam together we, we didn't really know each other very well at that point and he, he kind of arrived two days after me and we kind of just waved to each other and Dude, what's the first thing you said to each other when you could first when like after a week right. when you, we haven't able to talk and you haven't really met before what's yeah. the first thing you said to each other after a week of silence yeah so we had these seven days and it was so full of this kind of you know divine attempt to pray and to meditate and to get close to those deep inner voices and the spiritual kind of exploration we were doing. And I think we got into the car and it was as if the devil in both of us said, where the f have you been? Because we just had the most disgusting, dirty, awful, dark conversation for three hours on the way to the airport. Because we, we'd had this, it was, like, it was like the devil felt so left out of the last seven days that he just came and made wow. us say the most like nasty, I can't even remember, I've like blocked it out. We just, we went to the darkest place for about three wow. hours. The devil was there, he says, after this week of silence, gearing him up for the movie Silence. Not only that, but you will notice what the devil inspired. If you knew that there was an afterlife, would that be comforting or terrifying? How, how would I ever know? I don't know. Uh, but is that, but, but I, what, what I mean is... is a that, visitation from an angel, how about that? Well, sure, but I would always question it. Even after a visitation, I would always... I think it's healthy. You think about Thomas Merton, the great Trappist sure. monk and, and philosopher, really. Yeah. Um, his, his doubt was his greatest ally. I, he was always constantly doubting. And I think 
A life of faith is not a life of certainty. A life of faith is a life of, of doubt. Now, how is doubt faith? Are they not the opposite of each other? This is the kind of philosophy that causes a mind never to grasp on a truth, especially the truth of God's Word. That is what the Jesuit training does. You see, the question to Eve in the garden was, Hath God said? Spiritualism revolves around questioning God's Word. Spiritualism is a belief that the dead are still alive in an afterlife realm. Spiritualism is at war with the plainest statements such as the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Rather than live eternally in the spirit world as is believed by most religions today, including much of Christianity, many religions today have the belief that after death, the dead know a lot, but the dead know not anything. But think about this for a second, even if an angel came to Andrew Garfield and said, God's word is true, or even spoke according to this word, Andrew could never know for sure or even believe it because he has been trained to disbelieve, doubt, and question the Word of God. From an article concerning the movie Silence entitled, Andrew Garfield, I Never Changed Who I Was, we read that, quote, Pope Francis joked that its star, Andrew Garfield, deserved to be ordained. It was high praise indeed for the actor, formerly known as the Amazing Spider-Man, this time channeling a Jesuit missionary in 17th century Japan. Channeling as in channeling spirits? I think that has already been established and proven. In fact, it's quite common in Hollywood. An actor, and actually I found out that Stanislavski, who invented modern acting, the method of modern acting that resulted in the American method and everything after that, was deeply inspired by St. Ignatius's spiritual exercises, so I felt kind of right at home. Method acting all comes from the ancient Jesuit theater, the method taught by Constantine Stanislavski. This is the method that all the A-list actors are using today. What kinds of things are they doing? And the same thing too, if you, if, in, in the mythology, if you could sell your soul to the devil, this could happen to you. I think that was the... Well, in, a, in an interesting way, uh, Ghost Rider is more real if you go for that sort of thing, in that he deals between the spiritual and the material. And if you have an open mind, anything is possible. In, the, in this movie, you uh, literally are fighting an inner demon. This, this hell beast that lives within you, and I'm kind of curious, it looks like it takes a lot of energy just to be able to bring that out, physically performing it. What was it like kind of working yourself up to that energy level to kind of have this fire burning inside of you? Uh, what I like to sometimes do is go outside the box and find something that's uh, more than natural, abstract, uh, larger than life, avant-garde in some way. Um, and you can do it in all sorts of art forms. You can do it in painting, you can do it in music. Why can't you do it in, in film acting? I, I, I read that you actually kind of painted your face and gun to the character of Ghost Rider, even though we don't see your face because you're a flaming skull on screen, right. but that you took efforts to try and inhabit that character physically. Is that part of like getting to that point, that energy point for you? Yeah, well what happens is when you make a decision to use the outside to work in, not only does it give you a kind of power, not unlike a child on Halloween, it also instills fear in your co-stars and the people around you, and you see that in their eyes, and then, then you don't have to act, because you suddenly get power from their fear. Sure, so are you eating cookies at the crafty table, and like all the crew is scared of you because you're, you look like Ghost Rider all I'm, the time? I'm not eating cookies <laughs> at the crafty table, I go to the set, and I go to my trailer. Gotcha. Oh, so you're, you're kind of in the zone the whole time. Right. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Some actors are known to take it to extremes, as I documented in the video I did on Jim Carrey. They would even stay in the character, believing not just that it would enhance their acting, but also even to the extreme that someone else would possess them. And that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. Definitely, definitely an important moment in the process where I found myself uh, subjugating Jim Carrey for Andy Kaufman and Tony Clifton, and then uh, and then at the end of it, looking for Jim Carrey again and having trouble finding him. And at a certain point, I, I realized, hey, wait a second, you know, if it's so easy to lose Jim Carrey, who the hell is Jim Carrey? And there was this Spielbergian kind of rack focus at that point where, like Roy Scheider on the beach, 
or I was kind of watching from another place. You said you've kind of disassociated yourself with, with Jim Carrey, but does it, you know, everyone, when we see your face, there's so many iconic roles in so many of our favorite movies from Eternal Sunshine, Dumb and Dumber and everything. Does well, that it, has nothing to do with Jim Carrey. That, that has nothing that, to do with Jim no, Carrey. Nothing at all to do with Jim Carrey. Matthew McConaughey, who co-starred with Jared Leto, said that when Jared Leto was method acting, it actually meant that Jared Leto was not on the set. In other words, there is someone else in Jared Leto's body. Hey, congratulations on winning the Golden Globe. I'm so excited to see you. That was great. Yeah, nominated for an Oscar. This, yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't realize this was the first time. This is the very first time. Yes, it is. So how exciting is that? <laughs> now, Jared Leto, uh, yeah. your co-star, he was pretty. He got nominated also. He sure did. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about that. He does a wonderful job, and I, I was reading up on it. He, he's like a method actor guy. That means that what, they stay in character all the time? Basically, it means there's one less person on the set. Yeah. <laughs> if Jared's a character playing Ray on, Jared's not on set. Great. Yeah. There's only one, per one, one less person on the set. This is how real it becomes. Even Will Smith confirmed the same thing, that Leto was possessed or someone else was in Leto's body when he played the Joker in the movie The Suicide. Smith said regarding the Joker that he never once broke from his role even after the cameras were off. I've never actually met Jared Leto. We worked together for six months and we've never exchanged a word outside of action and cut. I literally have not met him yet. So the first time I see him will be, hey Jared, what's up? He was all in on the Joker. Edward Norton, who starred in the movie Fight Club and also co-starred with Robert De Niro in the movie The Score, said this about De Niro and himself. Investigate, investigate, absorb, absorb, and then channel. I think he's a channeler, and I think I'm a channeler. And so it should not be a surprise that The Guardian is telling us that Andrew Garfield was channeling a Jesuit spirit. How is it that he was trained in the spiritual exercise of Loyola, going seven days without talking? doing all that fasting to lose 40 pounds and then suddenly the devil comes out of his mouth? That reminds me of a verse in the book of Revelation where we read, quote, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They certainly are going to the kings of the earth, the kings of media, and using them in this spiritual battle of Armageddon. And so it should not be no surprise for this to be happening to Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield needs our prayers. And this is what is behind the acting of Andrew Garfield, who played the role of Desmond Doss in the movie Hacksaw Ridge. There was a, a particularly profound moment where I went to um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is where Desmond eventually retired and passed away. And I went onto his old property um, and went into his, his old wood, wood, woodshed and handled his tools and walked around the lake that he would walk around. And it was, <laughs> I spent a day there just kind of praying <laughs> and, and, and asking, like, just guide me through this. If you can hear me, tell, like, tell me, tell me what to do. Tell me how to move. Tell me how to speak. Tell me how to behave, and I'll do whatever you say. So that, that there was some, there, there was a, a, a strange, mysterious spirituality going on around the the making of this film. Andrew, what's the trick to bringing across the idea of the American South and the accent while you're shooting in Sydney? The, we were talking about mystery earlier and how the and the process of absorbing Desmond's essence and attempting to ingest him. So I, so I stay in the accent all the time to not confuse myself mostly. There's the depth of soul. Uh, there's also, um, I think he wasn't a talker, Desmond, and Andrew's able to convey very much without the need of dialogue as an actor. I mean, you can just see into his eyes and stuff. It's all going on. So, I mean, I, his talents, I think, and he's very talented, just suited this character. And then I wasn't disappointed at all. He managed to inhabit Desmond, or Desmond inhabited him. I'm not sure which. I think there was some both going on. Garfield believes that Desmond Doss is still alive. Garfield believes that by touching things on his property, you can have the spirit of Desmond inhabit you. These are the spiritualistic rituals that many go through in order to let a spirit inhabit them. But the Bible says that the dead know not anything, and that trying to talk to the dead was classed as necromancy in the Bible. These are the spirits of devils, just as Satan came to Eve in the Garden of Eden saying, Thou shalt not surely die. The lie is being repeated to people who are ignorant 
concerning the truth about death. But look at what Garfield says about those who might know, understand, and even believe they have the truth. If you knew that there was an afterlife, would that be comforting or terrifying? How, how would I ever know? I don't know. Uh, but is that, but, but I, what, what I mean is... is A that, visitation from an angel, how about that? Well, sure, but I would always question it. See, a life of faith is a life of, of doubt. What I say, what I, what I mean when I say certainty scares me, certainty starts war. Certainty starts war on behalf of ideology. Certainty of the I, I, I know and you don't. That's the scariest thing to me in, in what, what a human being is capable of doing. And it sounds like Brother Garfield sadly has fallen for that spirit that causes us to question, hath God said? Can we really be certain? Did Jesus really say that we must believe on him in order to have eternal life? Is the Bible really truth or is there another way to live forever outside of believing God's word? Can we be certain? I believe we can. Now this is what theatrics can do to your faith. The main actor in the script is none other than Satan himself and most are amazed by the performance. Obviously this movie Hacksaw Ridge didn't inspire Andrew Garfield to have faith, so don't expect it to inspire you to have faith. However, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Instead of being inspired by Jesuit inspired theatrics, which cause us to doubt and then to call it faith, faith is the opposite of doubting. Pick up the word, get a concordance, do some word searches, study and see for yourself the harmony that is contained in the word of God. God does not want us hating these men. He does want us to hate the sin and to put away this adulterous and worldly filth and to be clean. But these people need our prayers, just as Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Bless them that curse you and return evil with good. Most of these men are angry at the Creator, the God of the Bible, because the devil has misrepresented him. Andy Kaufman starred on the TV show Saturday Night Live as well as the TV show Taxi during the early 80s. In 1984, Andy Kaufman sadly passed away from cancer. In 1999, Jim Carrey starred in the movie Man on the Moon, a movie depicting the life of the actor Andy Kaufman. Jim Carrey tells us that he gave up control of himself during this entire project to allow the late Andy Kaufman to inhabit and even possess him. Was it really the dead Andy Kaufman? who was in Jim Carrey during the filming of this movie. We're about to get into that right now. When I heard I had the part, I was looking at the ocean, and that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. When the movie was over, I couldn't remember who I was anymore. So you step through the door not knowing what's on the other side. And what's on the other side is everything. That's enough, perfect. I don't like it. I want to do one more. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. I There is no me, no self. Uh, Jim Carrey is gone. Who are only masks. As an actor, you play characters, and then if you go deep enough into those characters, you realize that your own character is pretty thin to begin with. 
you know? And then you suddenly have this separation and go, well, who's Jim Carrey? Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. Aleister Crowley taught that acting and assuming the role of a particular demon was the fastest way to come into contact with a demonic entity. Many actors and actresses have credited their success to possession by a spirit entity. Denzel Washington claims that the reason that he is able to put out such great performances is because he gets on his knees and calls on spirits to possess his body and empower him to play a given role. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. The performance by Denzel, that's one of the greatest performances ever. Let me tell you this story. All the speeches in the film were Malcolm's actual speeches. We did the research. So we're doing this one speech. I have my script in front of me. I'm looking at Denzel, I'm also looking at the monitor. He's killing it. So as I'm reading the script along with Denzel, and I, I see that, well, the speech is over. I'm gonna call a cut. But he keeps going. And he kept going for another five minutes till finally the film ran, ran out of the magazine. And the stuff that he said was better than Malcolm's words. So I finally called cut. I called Denzel. I said, Denzel, uh, that was great. But where did that come from? I mean, you, you went on five minutes after what was scripted. He said, Spike, I don't know. Denzel knew he had to be in a space spiritually where Malcolm come in his vessel. So that's why he was able to do that five minute thing after the script the pages ended. That was, that was Malcolm and him. Malcolm came into his soul right there. I said Denzel, he could not remember what he said. It is well documented that many of the best performances in Hollywood have come through those who open themselves up to be channels of spirits. Robin Williams claims that when acting he becomes possessed and that in the past they would have burned him as a witch. He says, yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden you're in. You just get this energy that starts going. But there's also that thing, it is possession. It is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where you really can become this other force. Leonardo DiCaprio's director, Agnieszka Holland, on Total Eclipse says this, Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages coming from another person's life. Johnny Depp has claimed that he is possessed with a multitude of demons. He has also said that he will not watch his movies. Why won't he watch them himself? Uh, let, let's talk about the, uh, the, the movie Public Enemies. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great story. Uh, I saw the movie the other night and really enjoyed it. It was okay. fantastic. Okay. Because I like it because historically, it's the real deal, you know? And, and, and have you seen the movie? No, I've not. <laughs> I'm sorry, you've not seen the movie? Not just yet. And, and are you too busy to see it, probably? Uh, you know, I, I, in a way, you know, once, once my job is done on the film, it's really none of my business. <laughs> you know? so, so you deliberately don't look at the finished product? Oh, yeah, I stay as far away as I possibly can. Is that can. right? Yeah. I, I, if I can, I try to stay in as profound a state of ignorance as possible. Uh -huh. Well, you come to the right place. <laughs> I prefer the experience. I mean, making the film is great. Right. The process is all fine. But then, then he's up there. Right. You know what I mean? But then, then he's up there. Right. You know what I mean? He is saying that it isn't really him in the movie and he can't watch him. Who is this him? Is Johnny opening himself up to demons possessing him? Maybe we should stop watching this stuff ourselves if it is that bad. Heath Ledger, who went to extremes in his quest to become something dark and sinister, took on the part of the Joker, a fictional character of the Batman series. Ledger had become so fixated on becoming the Joker 
that he lost all mental ability to separate fantasy from reality. In other words, Ledger openly admitted to some that he had at some point became possessed by the spirit of the Joker. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And it was, um, I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I was, got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things. And then Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and, you know, be talking to himself in the corner like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. And I would watch him and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him, didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around and then we'd watch him and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. And then all of a sudden my hand would go up like this and he cap caught my hand. Jack Nicholson, who also has been known to Channel Spirits, said after Ledger's suicide, shortly after taking the part that he warned Ledger about it. Now you can have a smoke Jack. Jack, 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 and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices, and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, sure. Sure, oh, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. Jim Carrey has starred in over 40 films, which include numerous titles including Ace Ventura, The Mask, Batman, Dumb and Dumber, many titles that have made millions and millions of people laugh. He has been dubbed the King of Comedy. Much more than entertaining millions, he has also done several films aimed at children, such as Dr. Seuss, Horton Hears a Who, A Christmas Story, and The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Regarding the movie The Man on the Moon, in which he portrayed the life of Andy Kaufman, Carrie tells us the following, I wondered at times myself whether Andy's possession of me was going to be something I could endure for the length of time it takes to make a movie. When the doc premiered recently at the Venice Film Festival, Carrie had called his method process psychotic at times. I suddenly saw that after I came back to myself, that there really isn't a self to come back to, the actor said of returning to Jim after letting go of Andy. Kerry also said it was a question of a feeling of honoring someone to the point of not feeling worthy to be the person playing that character. He, that is Andy, needs to do it himself. In other words, Jim Carrey is saying that the deceased Andy Kaufman needs to do the movie himself. When I heard I had the part, I was looking at the ocean, and that's the moment when Andy came back to make his movie. Hello. What happened after was out of my control. Andy felt it was necessary to stay in the character. He's exactly the way Andy was. It's totally surreal. The true author of the project is Andy and his genius. The fact that he committed so completely to what he did really made that possible and made it essential for me to lose myself, he said. I don't feel like I made the film at all. I feel like Andy made the film. Jim Carrey didn't exist at that time, he said. Andy actually affected the Grinch as well. But just who is really possessing Jim Carrey? Just who is Jim Carrey allowing into himself? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5 that the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. So really, how, if the dead know not anything, can Andy Kaufman be the one possessing Jim Carrey? Furthermore, we read that when a man is passed away, we're told in Job 14, 21, that his sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. You see, Andy Kaufman doesn't know that Jim Carrey is trying to honor him by letting him play himself and possess Jim Carrey because Andy Kaufman is dead and the dead don't know anything. Therefore, Andy Kaufman does not perceive what Jim Carrey is trying to do and therefore it is not Andy Kaufman whom Jim Carrey is allowing to possess him. You see, talking to the dead is called necromancy in the Bible and the Bible outlaws both of these things as a type of witchcraft 
in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9 to 11, it says, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. The Bible tells us why we are not to attempt to talk to these familiar spirits. Just as the devil in the garden deceived Eve, Satan and his angels are seeking to deceive us into not believing the word of God. We're told about talking to the dead in Isaiah 8, 19, and 20. It says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Satan has been deceiving millions through the means of spiritualism, seeking to have us believe we can talk to dead spirits. He comes telling us that the Word of God isn't true, just as He deceived Eve in the garden, that we can keep on sinning and we will still go to heaven despite the plain word telling us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die, Ezekiel 18.20. But furthermore, we are told that in Revelation 12.9, that He deceiveth the whole world, that is the devil. Not only is He deceiving non-Christians, but we are told in Scripture that He deceives most of the Christian world as well, that many would have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In other words, they would profess to be Christians, but live like the world. 1 Timothy 4.1 tells us that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is it possible that we might be doing this as Christians? Is it possible that you may be doing this with your children? Is it possible that you are allowing your children to watch scripts and movies that are given by demons? Jim Carrey would not leave character even off the set for four months, but furthermore, from the website Deadline Hollywood, we read the following. It says, When it came time to share notes with Ron Howard on how the Grinch stole Christmas, Carrey was nowhere to be found. So Ron got a call from Andy Kaufman to say that Jim wasn't available. And Ron jumped right in and Andy gave the notes for the Grinch script, Carrie recalled. Andy gave the notes, Carrie said. Jim is telling us that he was possessed by Andy Kaufman when he received the script for the famous movie, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. But if Andy Kaufman is dead, and as the Bible says, the dead know not anything, if the Bible is true, then it was not Andy Kaufman who gave the notes for the script to the Grinch. It was a spirit. The Bible calls these spirits fallen angels. And that is what gave the script for the Grinch who stole Christmas. The principles and morals taught to children in these movies include complaining, selfishness, strife, lying, and many other evils that will keep them from the kingdom of heaven. And it is none other than the seducing spirits of devils that are seeking to deceive and to destroy. You see, in the book of Hosea, we're told that there is a lack of something in the land. Hosea 4.1 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. There's no knowledge of God in the land, and that leads to a lack of morality in the land. Verse 2 tells us that swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. In other words, no morality in the land, and we are told that the land shall mourn. Verse 3. Finally, in verse 6, regarding this lack of knowledge of God in the land, we are told the following. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. What a sad thought. Our children will be lost because of our own lack of knowledge and failure to educate our children in the word of the Lord, and thus a failure to recognize that our children are being educated by familiar spirits or demons who are putting out these amazing scripts and performances through mediums such as Jim Carrey and others. Demons drawing hearts away from God and His Word. Some of us when we were younger were given wholesome shows like Highway to Heaven and Little House on the Prairie. Or was it really good and wholesome? Some of us might be shocked to discover that Michael Landon received some of these scripts from his dead father. Landon said, I felt my father's presence with me helping me to commit to paper the feelings I had. 
I really heard my father speaking to me from the other dimension, Michael Landon. But really, who is it that was inspiring this work? It wasn't his father because the dead know not anything. It was a familiar spirit, but it was not his family. The author of all these scripts was a seducing spirit. Most of these Christian movies have no talk of sin, judgment to come, nor call to true repentance as well as the promise of a living a life free from the bondage of sin thanks to the blood shed by Jesus Christ. And many of them are inspired by another spirit. Some of them are so incredible and feel good that you would believe they are of God, yet they speak nothing of Jesus or the cross, nor the power in it, nor what it is to deny ourselves. But in the end they will lead us from believing and trusting his word. Jim Carrey may not realize that he is being misled by another spirit. The spirit wants Carrey to believe as Eve that he is God. It is a pantheistic, new age belief to believe that God is in you. And you really need only to develop the God within yourself. I believe in an energy of God, an yeah. energy of, you know, everything is divine. You know, yeah. there's just not, there's no, there's no thing that isn't divine. Right. Everything is divine and I'm that. They talk about omnipresence in church and nobody really thinks about what that means. What it means is every cell of your body is God. And that is really the age-old lie from the serpent in the Garden of Eden that is rampant throughout these New Age religions which subtly teaches you that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, Genesis 3.5. Jesus said, Our Father who art in heaven, not our Father who art in everything or everywhere. These spirits are lying spirits and only by study of the word will we truly know the truth. Jim Carrey has been dubbed the king of comedy, a king of the earth. You see, these demons are looking for men like this to be mediums of their message and lies. In Revelation 16, 14, it says they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They are going to the kings of the earth such as Jim Carrey, the proclaimed king of comedy, just as in a prior video on Oprah Winfrey that I did where she dubbed herself the queen of all media and how she tells us that her inspiration was dead people as well, and how she emptied herself and allows these spirits to enter into her. I will attach a link to that video below for more. The demonic spirits are working through these mediums to deceive millions, and most who watch these films are laughing and amazed by the performances, but they have no idea of the origin behind them, nor the intent of the seducing spirits that give the scripts for them. Spend your uh, first half of your life acquiring and adding thinking you can add to yourself mm -hmm. and and it looks great I mean it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes and mm -hmm. you know and you're uh, and you've done something that people admire mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> but it can never fulfill you you can never be happy don't miss the next video be sure to like and subscribe press a little bell beside the subscribe button to get reminders for when the next video comes out also check below for the links I mentioned in this video. And if you would like to help our ministry or you are interested in having us come to speak in your area, please visit our website www.thethirdangelsmessage.com. Feel free to donate or contact us. God bless you. See you next time. And click a thingy and go. <laughs>
Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. When you talk about artificial intelligence, because the character Winston yeah. was so good, Dan, I had to keep flipping back to make sure, are we sure this guy's not a human? Right. He was so real in the way that he thought and the way that he behaved. What is the message you're trying to send to us there? Because after a while, it, it scared me a little bit that the guy was so, so, so clear to me that I thought I knew him. I do believe in manifestation, power of that kind of stuff, but I don't believe that any of it matters. You know, I'm, this mattering is, a, is to me a, a human construct, yeah. uh, born out of a need, the same, same need as you have to have, you know, deities and things like mm. that. I, mean, I believe in an energy of God, an yeah. energy of, you know, everything is divine. You know, mm. there's just not, there's no, there's no thing that isn't divine. Right. Everything is divine and I'm that. I'm not the body. I'm you guys and I'm this thing and I'm this thing and I'm the cameras and it doesn't matter to me what's happening on them. This is great. Origin, the what, fifth novel, right, in this um, it is. Robert Langdon series, and it focuses on this question we talked about, but how God will survive science. Is our culture the best role model for a new consciousness, a new intellect? Uh, if it learns to be like we are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's gonna learn a lot of compassion, but it could also learn uh, a lot of uh, self-centered evil. Life isn't happening to you, it's happening for, yeah. you know, for the good of all, everyone. It's just a, it's like a, it's a play, it's a, it's a, it's a f giant, you know, field of consciousness dancing for itself and you're here to make me happy and you're to kind of, it's making itself happy, cool. you know? It's like one soul, that's how I feel. I feel like, you know, people say, well, I have a soul, you don't have a soul, there's no you, but I, I feel like there is a soul and it includes everything. Yeah. Maybe an existential out-of-body experience, perhaps, for Jim Carrey, or something else interfering with his mind. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself. And, uh, I don't care. But Jim, you got really dressed up for the occasion. You look good. No, I Was didn't that an get accident? dressed up. I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There is no me. There's no you? No. We're not here. This is a dream? It's just things happening. I'm finding that, ultimately, the the freedom from it is uh, is something people are kind of hungry for in a way. Right. They're like, I don't want to be me either. Right. You know, and I and I go, well, look, great, because you never have been. Right. Has this always been the case? Like, it, deep down, has is, is that been something that you've always thought of, or is, is that a, a shift? In it? Uh, the knowledge has been evolving, you know, and, and I had to, I, I believe that I had to become a famous, you know, idea. Yeah. Uh, and get all the stuff that people dream about and uh, and uh, accomplish a bunch of uh, a bunch of things that uh, you know that that look like success in order to give up my attachment to those things mm. it's been a part of the evolution of uh, ego is is to uh, spend your uh, first half of your life acquiring and adding thinking you can add to yourself mm -hmm. and and it looks great. I mean, it looks great when you got a cool car and you got good, nice clothes, and mm -hmm. you know, and you're uh, and you've done something that people admire, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> but it can never fulfill you. You can never be happy. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not where happiness comes from. There aren't too many people who this guy can't make laugh. <sighs> He starred in over 40 films, and we all have our favorite. Yes, from The Mask to The Cable Guy. Hello, Mama. Liar, liar. Batman Forever. Joy, get him! Bruce Almighty. Yes, man. Dumb and Dumber. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? The Truman Show, Me, Myself, and Irene, then the more serious, number 23. And of course, the one that pretty much started it all, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Did you have any trouble getting in? No, the guy with the rubber glove was. You know, you're talking about like Jim Carrey the man, Jim Carrey the performer. Is Are you more comfortable as one or the other, or is that like, are they even mutually exclusive? I don't exist, so uh, they're all characters that I've played, including Jim Carrey, including 
Joel Barish, including any of those things, they're all characters. It told us the story of a man who stepped through his life from a child to becoming a hugely successful comedian. Also, with appearances on Saturday Night Live and David Letterman. I was just playing bad guy wrestler, you know? And, and it's just a role, it's not me. Jim Carrey was a less uh, intentional character, right? because I thought I was just building something that people would like, but it was a character, you know? So it's, uh, you know, I played the guy that was free from concern so that people who watched me would be free from concern, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and then at a certain point you go like, okay, well, that's great. And I thought, I thought I had become Andy Kaufman, but there was no me actually at the end of it all. I realized that there was, you know, that this character was, making choices to play a character and uh, you know so that's what kind of happened and that's what Chris found in this interview and in this footage that there was actually a existential not a crisis but a discovery going on you know there's been a lot of talk in, in the last few days well today recently about a lot like, of people making sound over here. <laughs> so much of that. That's right. People talking about an interview that you did at, at New York Fashion Week, and you talked about. I've identity. covered a lot of fashion weeks. This is the first time I've run in to Jim Carrey. Wait, tell me, is it true you're wandering the streets? You need a date to the party? What's up? No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I just uh, you know, there's no meaning to any of this. So I uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could f come to and join, and uh, and uh, and here I am. I mean, you got to admit, it's completely meaningless. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating Do you icons. In icons, boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. It's, it's every actor's job to be brave, to be to take chances and risk this whatever this is. Kerry scored a Golden Globe Award for his performance. And thank you very much. I appreciate it and is thrilled to be revisiting the world. God, man, woman, dog. <laughs> Let's go to entertainment now. Comedian Jim Carrey has been forced to explain a bizarre interview he gave at New York Fashion Week just days ago. Do you believe in icons? I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist, but there is a, a wonderful fragrance in the air. You don't believe certain icons have the power to make change, to think differently, to be bold, to inspire others? Artistry? You're one of them. On the good foot. Ha! Yeah. You shut her down now. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise beyond the red S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. Do you think that people kind of just don't understand it or they haven't clued in to this whole thing you're talking about of people wearing masks? I think that we're all, you know, we're all trying to uh, add things to ourselves so that we can finally define, our, define ourselves and then everybody will get us and they'll go, okay, that, this is what you are. And then if you actually get there, uh, you will find it so empty that you'll realize that's really not what it's about. It's, it's about not only, you know, just going with the flow, but it's about not taking it personal, you know? It's like the difference between how a house and my house is a world of difference and it's the my that's the problem you know so you can do all this without the my involved there's there's just a, a relative manifestation of consciousness appearing and uh, and then somebody gave him a bunch of ideas they gave him a name and a religion and a nationality and he clustered those together into something that's supposed to be a personality the happy place is realizing that you're everything, you know, and that there's no real you involved in the first place. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a weird little semantic jump that you make where it sounds like, well, that's totally threatening, man. I can't, I can't not be me. I've built this construct. Yeah. You know, I've, from the time I was given a name. And it's just ideas. Right. They're just ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that separates you from an African-American or an African-Canadian mm -hmm. is an idea, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the weather, right. you know, and the adaption to the climate <laughs> and whatever it is. I, I, I don't believe in any of it. This is a kind of a recurring theme in all of these books of science and religion. 
God and technology. And it's a, kind of a personal journey to try to try to reconcile the two against each other. And one of the things, too, you talk about is artificial intelligence and where that takes us. Yeah. That's, you delve in, it's not only just a great filler, you really kind of challenge the mind. The story begins with a, with a brilliant futurist who has made a discovery that he believes will undermine the foundations of world religion. I had to learn a lot about AI to, to write this book. And uh, these are exciting times. The, the world is changing very, very quickly. And uh, there's a lot happening that's going to pose some big ethical dilemmas that we're going to have to deal with. A AI is something that fascinates me deeply, mainly because scientists are, uh, they can't agree on whether it's going to save us or kill us. Uh, a lot of scientists feel that we're on the verge of a new renaissance, that AI will solve the big problems of humanity, scarcity, overpopulation, pollution. Uh, and yet, a lot of scientists feel that it's so powerful it will destroy us. And as evidence, they remind us that our species has never created a technology that we have not weaponized. And it would be naive to think that AI will be any different. But Dan, you also said something interesting to me that with religion, we're always looking up. And in this era of the smartphone, we're always looking we, down. We are. And that was a fascinating thing to talk to, to both scientists and theologians while researching this book and understanding that technology is changing the way we interact as humans. And, you know, when I grew up, my miracles were the virgin birth, the resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, and nowadays, you talk to most kids about the resurrection, and it doesn't really register. Yeah. Their miracles are whatever Snapchat can do this week or whatever yeah. the new iOS can do. Um, and it's funny, we were, we were talking earlier about this idea that technology has given everybody with an iPhone an international publishing deal instantly. Instantly. A platform. Instantly. Right, right. A platform. And it used to be that, that there was a vetting process to information that rose to the surface. You're in the news, you understand that. There's no when filter. I mean, throughout time, like Andy, like Lenny Bruce, like breakthrough people, artists and whatever, uh, refused to wear the mask. Although Andy was putting masks on, those who wished to masquerade for the rest of this virtual game uh, sometimes were made really uncomfortable by it. And, and that's kind of the experience I had, trying to get back to myself and then when I finally did get back to who Jim Carrey was, I was like, well, I, this is optional. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not really going to stick in here too long. Um, I'm going to play with it. You know, this is a great avatar. I, I enjoy it. Uh, couldn't beat it, really. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've done pretty good, so I get to, you know, I get all the best weapons and stuff. And, uh, and no, I'm just, uh, I'm just enjoying the ride. Everything I'm doing, everything that this that's happening right now around this is is about the same thing. It's all about identity. I would like to take this entire audience out for milk and cookies. Follow me.
you wake up in the morning and you feel like I'm the universe, you don't have to reach for the stars. You know, you can just let life happen. Yeah. And walk through the doors. You know. We'll have to about that. Sorry. Thanks very much. I'm sorry, hey. you've run out of time. Well, listen, you've made me very happy. So That's thank you for well, your good. time today, man. No, actually, I didn't make you happy. Right. You're I don't not, know who you've here. made happy, but no. There's a happy feeling here. Just a cluster of tetrahedrons. Still trying to figure this out. But a pleasant one.